set up your scene so your eyes and mouth uh, both move and then you can hide the teeth and tongue and anything in there that's going to get in the way and also make seven layers so on layer one you're actually going to have your mesh that's being deformed and then on layer two um, you're just going to have the mesh at the bind pose and I'm just going to call this face two and I'm going to copy it over to layer four five six and seven and you know name it uh, phase four, five, six, and seven. Um, and layer three should stay empty. All right. So on layer two, we're actually going to pick what part of our mesh is going to be dynamic. So we're probably going to say we want all the cheeks and some of the nose, and we could probably say that everything from here up shouldn't really be getting affected by the toothbrush. And from here down, probably a pretty safe point. We could probably get rid of this edge loop too, but uh, I guess better safe than sorry. Uh, and then same with inside the mouth bag. I'm going to delete everything from here and around because I know that the toothbrush will probably never go that far back. Um, could probably get away with deleting this one too, but we're going to leave it. It also helps to have an extra ring of these because if you wanted to put in uh, another end constraint later, a uh, transform constraint, then it would hold this in place a little bit better. So, um, also probably don't need any of this. Alright, so now we actually have to make an end cloth out of this. So I'm going to duplicate it, and I'm going to name it Face 3. And I'm going to put it on Layer 3, Hide Layer 2. And because this is going to be an end cloth, what we actually want to do is we want to parent it to the head control and then we want to freeze the transformations select the mesh go to end dynamics go to end mesh create end cloth and hit apply alright now we have an end cloth just test it hit play it should fall away good go into the nucleus shut off your gravity. Uh, you can tweak all these other controls later. And what you want to do is go back to this layer 2 right here. And what we want is we want this to be wrapped deformed by layer 1. So select layer 2 first and then select layer 1. Go to animation tab, create deformer, wrap, click on exclusive bind because this is the same mesh so one vertex to one vertex um, and hit apply and then just test it and the mouth opens and you can see that this opens with it that has been wrapped and now here's this end cloth and what we want to do is we want to constrain this end cloth to this uh, wrapped part of the face so take layer two and then select layer three and go to end constrain and and attract to matching mesh now I believe yes this is going to work alright so what's happening here is we have um, the end cloth uh, the end cloth is uh, interpenetrating with itself um, so there's a couple ways that you can fix that the first one would just be to shut off self collide but I actually think what you probably want to do first, though, is turn down the thickness, uh, maybe 0.01, and see if that does it and leave self-collide on. No? All right. Well, you're going to need the thickness up a little bit later. So I think what we can do is uh, take this collision strength and uh, key it. Uh, so start with it at zero, and then as soon as it starts to get apart right here, turn it back to one there we go and the only reason this is happening is because the mesh is uh, just a little bit too tight when it starts um, but this really isn't that big of a deal 
All right, uh, so the next thing we probably want to do is we want to test this. Um, so let's bring in a toothbrush mesh. So here's our toothbrush mesh. And uh, what I've done is I've taken the actual toothbrush and I've just applied a transparent shader to it to make it a little bit easier to see. And inside of this toothbrush, I have a new object, uh, which is basically just a toothbrush scaled down. And maybe you want to get this as dead center inside the brush as possible. Because this is actually what's going to collide. Uh, and I'll explain why it needs to be like this in a minute. So the next thing you want to do is just take this whole brush and animate it in a way that it's going to interact with your character's face. And just for a very simple first test, I'm going to pull it up. All right, so then what you can do is um, ignore that for a second. Take this, and you actually want to make this right here into your um, into your collider. I'm just going to move these down real fast. All right. So go to end mesh, create passive collider. Uh, make sure it's on the same solver in case you have any other and dynamics in your scene. Same solver as the mouth is. And now, if we're lucky, all right, we are affecting the end cloth. So the next part is a little tricky, and that's actually playing with the dynamic settings on both the nucleus and on the end cloth and on the constraint. So uh, let's just play this through. It certainly looks a little bit better. So one of the things I did was on the nucleus, um, I set up the max, the max collision iterations to 100. And the reason why is that the end cloth has to be colliding with the other pieces of the end cloth, and the solver should allow it to do more than any of these four points. It should be hundreds. Um, I turned down the sub steps to speed things up. That could probably come back to bite you. You're probably going to want this to be like 10 when you do it for real. But the higher you put up your max collision iterations, the better off you're going to be. I'm going to leave it at 100 for now. Um, you can also actually go into the end cloth settings and play with its thickness. I'll move this up to like 0.2. Play it out, and it's uh, and that's just going to make the lips fight the toothbrush a little bit more. You can see that they're kind of holding their shape a little bit. Um, maybe what we can do is play with the stretch resistance, the compression resistance. Let's try. Leave that at 10. But at any rate, this is something that you can play with. Uh, honestly, you're probably going to get pretty decent results once you smooth the mesh anyway. Um, once you smooth the mesh anyway, and you can just be careful about where you move the toothbrush. And you'll see that because there's thickness on the end cloth itself, that's why we have the collider here, uh, making it a little bit smaller. But getting back to doing the actual rigging, let's go back to frame zero. Now what we need to do is we need to get this end cloth um, affecting a mesh. So if we go to layer four, we just have one of our faces So what, so what we want is we want this end cloth to wrap to form uh, this layer 4. So select this, uh, select face 4, select the end cloth, which we should put um, out of smooth mode for now, animation, create deformer, uh, wrap. Now when I hide this and bring this back, Alright, so the good thing is you can see how it's affecting the mesh and that's looking good. 
The bad news is it's kind of wiggling the ears and moving parts of the head and doing a bunch of stuff that you don't want it to be doing. Uh, because see where all these little blue dots are? That's basically showing the bounds of the end cloth. And when any of these on the edge get moved or anything gets moved, these farther out vertices just kind of go crazy even though they should be staying still. So there's actually a really simple solution to that. Uh, take layer 4 and select it and then select layer 5 and go to create deformer, blend shape. Uh, I'm just going to call this 4 to 5 local, apply. And now on this layer 5, just make sure you turn on that blend shape. And what you can do is you can just paint the weights on it so anything out here doesn't get affected. So edit deformers, uh, paint blend shape weight tool. And let's flood it with a value of 0. And now let's go back in and let's paint all around this mouth area, maybe falling off towards the end there. I'm sure there's a better way to do this. I'm pretty sure um, there's a way in Maya where you can just select the faces, because uh, ideally you'd want to just select all of these. I don't know how to do it. I'm just going to paint it because that's really um, not a big hindrance in this tutorial. It's just a little bit of a waste of time. All right, when that is all done, it'll look something like this everywhere within the uh, every vertice that was shared by the end cloth, which you can see by these little blue dots, will have a weight of one. Everywhere outside will have a weight of zero. So uh, what you want to do now is you want to export this. You want to save this because you're going to need it again. So mouth weights, I'll just that's what I'll name it as. Yes, I already saved it. That's why it's making me replace it. And now what you want to do is you want to go to layer 6. So the issue here So the issue is that you have your non-dynamic rig right here which you're going to want to apply to your final mesh. And then you also have um, your dynamic uh, mesh right here and you're going to want to apply that too. But the issue is the mouth is open on this layer 5 right here and the mouth is also open on layer 1. So if you were to apply both of these as blend shapes to layer 7 which would be our final layer then you're going to get a double transform with the mouth being open uh, twice as wide as it needs to be. So what you need to do is you need to make a reverse blend shape around just the mouth uh, for layer 6. And if that doesn't make sense, don't worry about it because I'm just going to do it anyway. Uh, so select layer 1. Remember, this is all non-dynamic. And then select layer 6. Go back to frame 1. And go to create deformer, blend shape. And I'm going to do world space. You probably would want to do this all local. But I messed something up in that these actually have different uh, vertex uh, positions because I froze the transformations on 6. Uh... I didn't make this rig, so I'm going to blame it on the guy who did. Sorry, VJ. So hit apply. All right, so now if we go down to the blend shape we just made, we can turn it on, and you'll see that it's good because the mouth is opening, but it's bad because the eyes are opening. So if we go into Edit Deformers, uh, into our Paint Blend Shapes Weight tool, and select the source right here, what we can do is we can just import that map that we just made. And just like that, now we have, um, now we have the mouth non-dynamic separated out from the rest of the face. So here comes the fun part. So now what we can do is we're ready for layer 7, which will be the final mesh which you'll be rendering. So, select layer 1 and select layer 5. 
and select layer 6. And then finally, select layer 7. Create deformer, blend shape. Now make sure you're back on the first frame at the bind pose. I'm just going to call this final blend shape apply. Now I'm just going to run through the simulation real quick. And just as a reminder, I want to show you what each of these layers is doing. Layer 1, non-dynamic. Layer 5, dynamic. Layer 6, just the mouth, non-dynamic. So in layer 7, let's go and turn these blend shapes on. So if we turn on layer 1, good. Now we're getting the eyes moving, now we're getting the mouth starting to move. Then we go and turn on layer 5. All right double transform but at least it's moving um, you know according to the dynamics then to layer six make this negative one undoing the mouth so now what you have is you have a final mesh which is partially non-dynamic and partially dynamic so here's a high quality simulation One of the things that I overlooked before was in the end cloth shape, you actually have to set up the max, um, the max self collide iterations to 600. It's set to 4 by default, and that's how many collisions your end cloth can have. So, to get this to play back, um, all you have to do is select the end cloth, which was on layer 3, and go to end cache, create new cache. Um, and this is cached, which is why it's moving so quickly.